That, my friends, is the perfect trifecta. You dented the garage door on the house you're trying to sell, you totaled the drone, and you pissed off your wife who just last night told you not to buy the damn thing. Hi, I'm Niels Granholm, and welcome to Dronorama, sponsored by Adorama. On today's episode, we're going to show you how not to wash your drone, see a guy hit a skyscraper twice, and watch a guy smack his best friend in the face at his wedding. So you bought a drone, finally. Might look something a little like this. Millions of people before you have bought them as well. You can do what that guy did and fly it into a garage door or take the time to learn something about your drone. When you open up your Adorama box and you get that drone and you enjoy that new drone smell, I know I do. First thing you gotta do is register. Go to the FAA webpage and register your drone. It is not an option. You will get a number that you actually stick on your drone and they do that for accountability. They do it for accountability because turds go out of their way to do stupid things. They're flying into airspace and endangering passengers on manned aircraft. Kind of like the guy here in London who actually hit an Airbus 320. Drone strikes British Airways plane approaching Heathrow Airport. In a very close call between a drone and an airliner on approach to New York's Kennedy Airport with 159 people on board. I would like to imagine those 159 passengers, along with the FAA, me, everyone here in the studio, and the Girl Scouts of North America, would appreciate it if those passengers had an uneventful flight. And also, know your FAA airspace requirements to keep that flight uneventful. And stay below 400 feet above ground level. And don't be under the influence of anything. Can't fly within 5 miles of an airport or even out of line of sight. Many of these drones will fly like 11 to 30 million miles, but just because you can't do it doesn't mean you should. Don't fly over people, whether it's just a couple of people or over a large stadium. This guy wanted to get a great view of the crowd below him, but instead, five people ended up breaking the fall of the drone. Ouch. And stay away from the fire trucks and police, they're trying to do their job. If you're in the air, they can't be. You completed your FAA registration, you've charged up your batteries in both your radio and your drone, and you're all set to go, but you've got a couple other steps. I'd like you to do these steps to prevent this from happening. Oh, shit. What the deal? Having a checklist is a great idea. Before you even leave the house, know the limitations of your drone. Some are built for the outdoors, some are built for indoor. The DJI Phantoms do really well in the wind. Ones like the Millennium Falcon here do not. Check the weather before you go. High winds, storms, and rain don't work well with your drone. Inspect your drone. Make sure the blades aren't chipped and there's no loose wiring. When you finally decide to venture out, find a nice safe open area. And also, if you're flying for your buddy's wedding, don't smack him in the face. Please tell me they're okay. Both of them. Wow. Well, it's a good time for our next segment. We are the champions. Come be a winner with us. Here we have located over a densely populated city, undoubtedly near an airport. And look, just to the left, there's a stadium. Guy comes in for a closer look at a skyscraper. Oh! But he hits the skyscraper, but fear not everybody, he got control. Total control, which is awesome. This gives him time to reflect, learn from his mistakes, knowing there's no way in the world he would ever, ever make that mistake again. Oh no. Ah, oh, the humanity. I love that song. And you know, if you're part of that segment, you have done something special. Next week on Dronorama, looking at folks taking the law into their own hands. And also, after you land safely, doesn't mean you're safe. Thanks for joining us. See you next week and safe droning.